Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning to all my students. Okay, so today we are going to discuss, uh, look at one of the set of uh, PSP and clone questions uh, from College Matriculasi Kelantan. And hopefully that uh, this video helping you to recall for your revision and preparing for your next uh, PSPM examination. Okay, so we're going to look take a look at the questions, uh, the set of the questions. So you can see that here there are section A with 25 marks. Uh, There's a question of probability, uh, random variables. <coughs> and question number three then. Okay. And for section B, with 75 marks, there are seven questions. Okay, question of uh, numerical method. Uh, we call code. Uh, we call ellipse and uh, we call circle and vector. <coughs> question of random variables, continuous and uh, okay, same because we question number six, can random variables. And question 7, special probability distribution. Okay, so we're going to look at the question we call. We're going to discuss the question one by one. Are you all ready? Okay, let's do it. So for question number 1, the probability that a student passes mathematics is 0 0.4. If the student passes maths, the probability is a student will pass physics is 0 0.7. And... Okay, you may just read all the question by yourself and look at this one here. This we call the probability tree diagram. If the students passing maths and the pro probability student passing physics or fail physics and if not passing maths and we call passing physics or did not pass in physics. Okay, so calculate the probability that a student pass physics. <coughs> so calculate the probability that a student passes calls the subject of physics meaning uh, physics in the second branch here so we are taking both the student passes physics so it doesn't mention uh, it doesn't mention if the student passes maths or not so the student passes physics here and also here so the probability of student passing physics equal to okay first uh, you go through you call the branch for passing mathematics which is 0 0.4 okay here and here so it is so we call property of student passing maths and physics and also student that might be not passing maths but then passing physics so property of okay it's not a multiple we call it's not multiplied here it's supposed to be addition. Okay. So probably of uh, not passing mass, but then passing physics. So then it is 0 0.4 multiplied with 0 0.7. 0 0.4 multiplied with 0 0.7. And not passing math 0 0.6 and passing physics 0 0.63 so get a calculator multiply between these two and add them all it give you uh, 0 0.28 plus with 0 0.378 and the total is 0 0.65 And next, <coughs> calculate the probability the student passes mathematics if the student passes physics. For question number 1a, 1 and 2. Okay, so the probability for question number a2 here is the probability of, as we call student passing maths, Passing maths if the student pass physics. Okay, so in this case we come up with probability of m intersect f divided by probability of m. So now for this one, probability of 
probability of a student passes physics, we already have it here. So, and this one, the probability of M intersect F, M intersect F. Okay, 0 0.4 multiplied with 0 0.7. Then you come up with 0 0.4 multiplied with 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.658. Equal to <coughs> zero point four two six. There you go. And question B <coughs> determine whether in the event of student passing math and physics are independent. So in this case, we can use the probability of M intersect F and see whether it's a equal to probability of M multiplied with probability of student passing physics. <coughs> okay. M intersect F. M intersect F. M intersect F, which is 0 0.4 times 0 0.7. Okay. And another one, another one here. And probability of M, what do you call Passing fees met, which is 0 0.4 here. And so the passing physics, passing physics, as you can see here, now it is 0 0.658. And this gives you 0 0.28. And this one, uh, what about this? <coughs> Zero point four multiplied with zero point six five eight, which is zero point two six three two, and they are not equal. So then, what is our conclusion then? This event is uh, not independent. So that is solution for question number one. <coughs> so now, question number two, the probability density function, probability density function or discrete random variable. Discrete random variable x is given here and k is a constant. Show that k is 2 over 21. As you know that the summation of all the probabilities of x, since there is a discrete here, it is equal to 1. Okay, we have value of x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Probability of x equal to 1 plus probability of x equal to 2. Probability of x equal to 3 plus probability of x equal to 4. And x equal to 5. And x equal to 6 equal to 1. <coughs> And uh, we call the properties equal to kx divided by 2. k is a constant and we substitute every single value of x here. When x equal to 1, 1 times k equal to k over 2. <coughs> and that, when x equal to 2, 2 and 2. 2 k divided by 2. Okay, I remain this as a 2 over 2 even though we can simplify this as a 1 because after this, we're going to add all of them. So let it be as a fraction with a denominator of 2. So don't simplify this first again. When x equal to 3, 3k over 2, 4k over 2, plus 5k over 2, plus 6k over 2, equal to 1. So 1 plus 2 equal to 3, plus 3 equal to 6, 4 equal to 10, uh, 15, and 21. 21 k divided by 2 equal to 1. k equal to 2 over 21. There you go. <coughs> okay, for question B, probability of x, uh, no, probability of x lies in between 2 and 5. So look at this one, it says a discrete here, meaning 
every single sign with an equal or not equal sign is matter here. So look at this one here when x greater than or equal to 2, meaning it does include with 2. Then x equal to 3 will be of x equal to 4. Does it include 5? It's less than only, right? So we stop at 4 here now. Where k equal to 2 over 21. Um, probability of x equal k equal to 2 over 21 times x divided by 2. <coughs> mm -hmm. So then it is now x over 21 for x equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the substitute value of k, 2 over 21 here, and x over 2 simplified. So this is the proper equation here now, x over 21. So when x equal to 2, 2 over 21 plus 3 over 21 plus 4 over 21 equal to 2 plus 3 equal to 5 plus 4 equal to 9 over 21. <laughs> Okay, I might be forgot something here where we can simplify this, divide by 3 equal to 3 and divide by 3 equal to 7. Okay. Okay, 3 over 7. Question C, F4. F4, okay. It's a cumulative, cumulative uh, of every single probabilities, meaning the summation of the probabilities from x equal to 1 until x equal to 4. Okay, so probability of x equal to 1. So then, <coughs> um, we're going to list down all again, okay, from x equal to 1, 1 over 21, plus 2 over 21, plus 3 over 21, plus 4 over 21. Mm, yeah, okay, so 1 plus 3 equal to 3, plus 3 equal to 6, plus 4 equal to 10 over 21. <coughs> and then EX. So I'm going to clear this. Uh, EX <coughs> expected where it's a summation of x multiplied with every single is in probabilities here. <coughs> so we begin with 1, where x equal to 1, multiplied with uh, 1 over 21, plus with 2, 2 over 21 times with 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6, oh sorry then, this is 10 over 21 <coughs> and 6 over 20. Okay, so <coughs> 1 by 1, 1 over 21, 4 over 21, 9 over 21, 16 over 21, 25 over 21, and 36 over 21. <coughs> Equal to 91 over 21 or 4.333. Okay, into the 
decimal places, let it 4.33. There you go. Okay, next question. Assume that the number of email received by the student daily has a Poisson. Okay. Distribution with a mean of 5. So, determine the property that student received between 5 and 13 emails daily. <coughs> Question 3A. Okay, so <coughs> property that students receive between 5 and 13. Property of X receive between 5 up to 13 emails daily between 5 and 13. So <coughs> because Poisson is considered also as a, we call uh, discrete. So every single sign equal or not equal is matters here. So this is not does not equal with five. It's only uh, we call greater than five. So it is property of x, which is equal to equal to uh, six and twelve. Okay, it's less than thirteen. So before thirteen, is it does include twelve here? Okay, if you use the statistical table, sorry for example. If you use this statistical table here, okay, once you find that we call the all the various properties here is only for property of x greater than or equal to six. Okay, is only for property of x greater than or equal to one. Okay, so we can use this one here minus property of x greater than or equal to <coughs> 13. Okay, why I'm using this? Okay, for in my class, I always use uh, something like this. So just imagine that if I use this block or this rod here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, uh, 14, for example. <coughs> so, x, uh, we call greater than 5. Greater than 5 is not equal to 5, so we begin with 6. Until, and here, which is less than 13, that's not equal to 13, so before 13, it's a 12 here. So, this is the value that you want here. But then <coughs> we can only find that using this one here, so it's property of x greater than or equal to 6 because it's beginning with 6 here. And then minus property of x greater than or equal to, if I put 13, you put 12 here, meaning uh, this one is not included. So we don't want, uh, we call we don't want it until 12. So I make this one as a 13 here. <coughs> Okay, so that's my style, how I recall, explain to the student uh, in the class. So then, when the property of x greater than or equal to 6, <coughs> go to 6, which is 0 0.3840 minus 0 0.0020. And it is now equal to 0 0.382. And question Number two, if the property of student receiving not more than M emails in a day is 0 0.616, determine the value of M. So, property of M, X less than or equal to M. <coughs> uh, student receive not more than M, meaning the, mini, the maximum is M here, 0 0.616. <coughs> so then, you come up with property of X. Uh, greater than or equal to m plus 1. Okay, and this is 0 0.384. So how do you get this one here? Because the total of probability is equal to 1. Okay, the total of probability is equal to 1. So 1 minus 0 0.616. It is 0 0.384. So then, uh, for this one here, where m 
plus 1 equal to <coughs> from 0 0.384 0 0.384 Poisson Okay, if you have this book with you right now, turn to page 13. Okay, turn to, turn to page 13. Okay, so look at the value of lambda, which is equal to 5. Lambda, lambda equal to 5.0. Okay, and then <coughs> find the, the value of 0 0.384. 0 0.384 and the value of r equal to 6 <coughs> so then m equal to 6 minus 1 equal to 5 okay and then uh, okay um, 15 days 15 days are randomly chosen by using binomial distribution. Find the probability that student receive between 5 and 13 minutes for a period of 9 days. So for 15 days. <coughs> so then the number of trial is 15 and P equal to 0 0.382. Okay. The number of trial is 0 0.382. So with x binomially distributed with 15 and 0 0.382. And property of x period of uh, 9 days. <coughs> okay. Equal to 15c9. 15C9, 0 0.382 to the power of 9 and 0 0.618 to the power of 6. So, <coughs> this answer here, 0 0.0483. Okay, so... Receive between 5 and 13, just like the previous question. It's now on the recall. We change the recall. Uh, the period is for 9 days. And the number of trials is 15 days here using the binomial. Okay. <coughs> now we look at the first question of section B. Show that equation of this one has a root between 1 and 3 from the Newton-Rapson formula. Show the effective equation is, okay, this one here. And... With the initial value of x1 equal to 2, calculate the root correct to 3 decimal places. So, uh, <coughs> just imagine that if we take this as a function of fx equal to natural log of x plus <coughs> x minus 4, okay, f1, natural log of 1 plus 1 minus 4. As we know that natural log of 1 equal to 0, so 1 minus 4 equal to negative 3. And f3 equal to natural log of 3 plus 3 minus 4. Okay, 3 minus 4 equal to negative 1. And natural log of 3, which I think that there's a value. Uh, <coughs> natural log 3 minus 1 here give you 0 0.0986. So then the changes from the sign of negative to positive, there's a changes there. So we come up with a conclusion that, that there's a root lies <coughs> between x equal to 1 and x equal to 3. Okay, so next step is fx equal to natural log of x plus x minus 4. Then f prime x equal to differentiate log x 1 over x plus 1. 
Okay. So now, uh, show that recurrent equation of this one. X n plus 1 equal to x n minus f x n divided by f prime x n. So then x n <coughs> x n <coughs> minus f x n f x first here x n here which is natural log of x n plus x n minus 4 divide by f prime 1 over x n <coughs> plus 1 okay so simplify the denominator here uh, it's just like 1 over x plus 1 which is 1 over x mm, 1 over x plus 1 <coughs> plus x over x or 1 plus x divided by x. So substitute this here as an uh, 1 plus x divided by x. So if we bring this denominator, we call this fraction above here then, it now become xn minus, okay, this is xn and xn. Okay, so it's just like we multiply this as n, x n divided by 1 plus x n. So x n multiply with everything here, you come out with x n, natural log of x n <coughs> plus x n minus 4 divided by uh, 1 plus x n. <clears throat> and then let's uh, recall, simplify this as n, uh, x n, 1 plus x n, minus x n, equal natural log of x n, plus x n minus 4, and everything divided by 1, plus xn <coughs> okay it's quite complicated but hopefully you might you might, you might try this uh, we call question by yourself one by one we call slowly okay so then here it is 5 <coughs> xn minus xn natural log of xn divided by 1 plus xn <coughs> and then xn minus natural log of xn and 1 plus xn <coughs> there you go same as this one okay so now um, we are going to what we call substitute the value So, it mentioned the question here now. <coughs> if an initial value, beginning of initial means that the beginning of that process with a beginning value is x1 equal to 2. Calculate the root correct to 3 decimal places. So then x2 equal to. Okay, we're going to use this one here now. Use the equation this for this. xn equal to. 2, 5 minus natural log of 2, divided by 1 plus 2. Okay, you may use the calculator then, it will give you 2.8712. And that's not all. Okay, class, that's not all. We are going to repeat this process to up to 3 or 4 decimal places. We like to compare the answers that we get here. With the next one, if we call we get 
exactly the same for three decimal places of the repeating process here, then that is will be the answer then. So x3 equal to okay, just now this is x1. Now this is x2. So we will use this for the next process 2.8712. 5 minus natural log of uh, no. Natural log of 2.8712 divided by 1 plus 2. And this gives you 2.9261. So look at this, 2, now is a deal for x2 is 2.8 and x3 is 2.9, of course, exactly, uh, exactly they are not the same, okay, so this is not the answer I'm looking for then. So x4, okay, for x4, you have a choice whether you like to substitute all the values here or you can simply use your calculator, okay, because we already, we got, we already substitute the two, at least the two values of x into this formula. So for x4, you can just uh, certainly write down the answers of that. And it is 2.9263. So look at this one here now. Okay, for the first and second process of this, uh, I do strongly suggest to all of you substitute the value of x here and also here. But for x4, x5 or x6, you can just simply use a calculator. Okay, so look at this one. No. 2.926 2.926 so look at the this one 1 and 3 <coughs> 1 uh, is less than 5 it didn't we call it change the last term value of 6 here it remains 6 and also 3 which is less than 5 it did not change this 6 to up to 7 it remains 6 here so then the root of equation is 2.926 there you go <coughs> okay so determine the vertices and foci of ellipse uh, sketch ellipse and label the foci center and vertices so class 25 x squared okay uh, uh as we call i uh, recall copy the, all these but then I make some record adjustment or make some changes. I bring this 250x next to the x here. So 25x squared minus 250x plus 4y squared minus 16y plus 5, 4, 1 equal to 0. <coughs> okay. Before, okay, class, in this case, we're going to use the completed square to change to get a recall uh, we call the uh, we call equation of an ellipse we're going to use the computer square process so before we begin with the computer square we must make sure that the coefficient of x square equal to 1 so then what can we do here now is we are going to factorize 25 x square minus 10 x plus also this for the y here, 4y squared minus 4y plus 5, 4, 1 equal to 0. Okay, so for 25, x squared minus 10x plus negative 10 over 2 squared minus negative 10 over 2 squared plus 4, y squared minus 4y plus negative 4 divided by 2 squared minus negative 4 divided by 2 squared plus 5, 4, 1 equal to 0. <coughs> okay, so look at this 3 and also here uh, 25 <coughs> for just imagine that look at this x negative 10 divided by 2, negative 5 squared. Minus negative 2 divided by, negative 10 divided by 2, negative 5. <coughs> negative 5 squared, 25. 
4 to then here y negative 4 divided by 2 minus 2 minus negative 4 divided by 2 negative 2 negative 2 squared equal to 4 plus 5 4 1 equal to 0 <coughs> okay so 25 multiplied with this and also here 4 times this and this for here 25 x minus 5 squared minus okay 25 squared 25 times 25 sorry i'm not really good in that um, process then 25 times 25 6 to 5 I'm sorry Six to five plus four y minus two square minus sixteen plus five four one equal to zero. Okay, so now five four one minus sixteen minus five four one minus sixteen minus six to five equal to negative hundred. Five four one minus 16 minus 6 to 5 equal to negative 100 bring to the other side 25 x minus 5 square plus 4 y minus 2 square equal to 100 okay <coughs> so class uh, equation of an ellipse okay you still remember then it is x minus h square divided by a square plus y minus k squared divided by b squared equal to 1. Okay, class. There are two versions of equation of an ellipse. In, if you look, uh, you look, we call it to some reference book. A and b can, a, we call, can change as a position based on the, we call, the highest uh, value of denominator. If the, the highest value of denominator is under y, so then A will take place here and B is under X. But then, uh, yes, I am going to do that. Okay, so to me, A is always greater than B. A is always greater than B. So then A it can be under X or under Y. Okay, so then here now, if we divide by 100, Every single term we divide by 100 here. 25 divided by 100, which x minus 5 square divided by 4 plus y minus 2 square divided by 25 equal to 1. So here now, with a squared is 25, b squared equal to 4. So then a equal to plus minus 5 and b equal to plus minus Okay, <clears throat> so uh, I did mention we call uh, explain re-explain here in one book in some books. Uh, it can be called. It's stated that a is under x and b is under y. It's whether a is greater than b or b is greater than a. In some, and we call in one other version. Uh, they stated that a is always greater than b. A can be, I we call below x. Or A can be below Y. And A when A is always greater than B, so then A will be major. So if A is under X, so then A is under the X or be, uh, under the X here, uh, the X will be the major axis and will, you will get an horizontal ellipse. Or if A is under Y, then Y become the major, you will get a vertical ellipse. So that's different then. So right now, uh, I stated with my version that where A is always greater than B and look at this one here now, the, de the highest denominator between these two is 25. So then A is 25, B equal to 4, and then uh, Y will be the major axis. Okay, so... I 
rewrite the equation. Rewrite the equation here. X minus 5 square divided by 4 plus Y minus 2 square divided by 25 equal to 1. So then A square equal to 25. Then A equal to plus minus 5. <coughs> and B square equal to 4. Then B equal to plus minus 2. Okay, so then I can clear everything. This one here. Because we need a space to sketch the graph of an ellipse and labeling at every single point or element, we call element that for center vertices and for side. So now, the center of this ellipse, this one, uh, x minus h squared divided by b squared, since that the b is 4 here, plus y minus k squared divided by a squared equal to 1. Then, the center of h and k equal to 5 and 2. Okay, <coughs> 5, x equal to 5, x, 5, and y equal to 2, here. And the major is, major axis is y. So y, c square equal to a square minus b square, which is uh, 25 minus 4 equal to 21. So then C equal to square root of 21. Square root of 21. Okay, so then uh, A equal to 5. So from here, Y is the major axis. So just imagine that from uh, Y equal to 2 here, move 5 units above, then you will get supposedly... 7 okay and then 2 move 5 units below 2 1 0 negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 here okay and then b equal to 2 so 5 units to the left 2 unit 2 units to the left 5 4 3 so it is here and then 5 6 7 so you just sketch it okay hopefully that you can get it nicely mm -hmm. and this will give you the focus point of focus f1 and f2 okay focus is always on what we call the major axis so the major axis somewhere around here okay F1 and F2. So this is V1 and V2. Okay, so this is 5. 5, five and then 2 plus 5 equal to 7. And for X is yet still 5. And then the value of Y, 2 minus 5 equal to negative and what about this one here now? F, yet as X is still 5. And then 2 plus square root of 21. And here now, yet still 5. But then this one, 2 minus square root of 21. There you go. Okay. Next question, number 3. <coughs> Show that the line does not intersect the circle and find the center radius of the circle. Determine the shortest distance between the line and the circle. Okay. 
So we imagine that if this line does not intersect the circle, just, so just imagine that there's a circle that, okay, and the line is did not touch or intersect at all, okay. So then, uh, from this two y minus five x plus four equal to zero, I make this one as a five x. Make this one as 2y equal to 5x minus 4 and y equal to 5x minus 4 divided by 2. Okay, we are going to substitute this value of y. Okay, this value of y into the y of this circle. So then x squared plus x squared plus y squared. y squared is 5x minus 4 divided by 2 squared my plus 3x minus 2 5x minus 4 divided by 2 plus 2 equal to 0. Okay, so then x squared. Okay, just now, uh, just now, uh, for circle, we have x, y, x, y. Now, all the variables are x now. X, 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 and X. Okay. So plus uh, this one, 25X squared. <coughs> uh, 5X times 5, 5X, 5X, 25 squared. 5 times 4 equal to negative 20, negative 40, plus 16. And divided by 2 squared equal to 4, plus 3X. Okay. 5x negative 5 negative negative become positive 4 plus 2 equal to 0. So simplify this, multiply 4, then we get uh, 4x squared plus 25x squared minus 40x. There's a 40x then, sorry. 40x plus 16 plus Okay, so just imagine 4 times 4x squared, 4 times 3 equal to 12, 4 times negative 5 equal to negative 20, so this one come out with minus 8x, so 4 times 2 equal to 6, 6 times 4 equal to 24 equal to 0. Okay, simplify this and give you 29x squared minus 48x <coughs> plus 40. equal to zero okay so <clears throat> look at this one here now we, we like to uh, recall recall to find out whether because to show that this line does not intersect the circle so we're going to use them b square minus 4 ac is whether greater than less than or equal to zero so if this line does not intersect the circle so we're going to use that here okay we see whether this equation greater than, less than, or equal to 0. So at this moment here now, this is the value of A, 29, B, negative 48, and C equal to 40. So negative 48 squared minus 4A, 29, and C equal to 40. And you use the calculator then, it gives you negative 2, 3, Six, which is less than zero. So we come up with the conclusion that the line does not intersect the circle. Okay, so this is it now. And find center and radius of the circle. Class, to find the radius and center of the circle, you may choose either using completing the square or comparing with the formula of uh, general equation of circle which is x square plus y square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0. Okay, I prefer, I prefer if we can recall compare that, comparing, comparing with, uh, we call using the, the square process 
it's all up to you then. I didn't say that using the square is wrong, but I'm preferring to use that uh, comparing with this equation and this small one then. So this is the equation now. X square plus Y square plus 3X minus 2Y plus 2 equal to 0. Okay, so 2G equal to 3 and 2F equal to negative 2. So then G equal to uh, 3 over 2 and F equal to negative 1. So the center of H and K equal to uh, negative G and negative F, which is negative 3 over 2 and 1. <coughs> Okay, and then uh, the center is negative through uh, negative three over two and one, and radius r equal to square root of g square plus f square minus c. Square root of uh, g three over two square plus negative one square minus c, where c equal to two. Okay, simplify this and give you radius is square root of 5 divided by 2. Okay. So now the shortest same distance from center from center of the circle 3 over 2 and all negative 3 over 2 and 1 to the line. Okay, so this one, the short distance, distance from the, from the center, which is negative 3 over 2 and 1, to the line of 2y minus 5x plus 4 equal to 0 or we change this into negative 5x plus 2y plus 4 equal to 0 okay using the formula of this short distance here negative 5 negative 3 over 2 plus 2 times 1 plus 4 and divide by square root of negative 5 square plus 2 square okay so this one you came up with 27 divided by 2 times square root of 29 so the shortest distance So, which I think that this one, is, the formula of this is already in the book. So, you may just refer that. I guess I recall, explain it to you, recall, write down the answers for you then. Between the shortest line, distance between line and the circle. It is D minus R, which is 27 over 2 square root of 29 minus square root of 5 over 2 okay it is 1.38 8 or approximate to 1.39 okay next class for this question of vector if I can change this in to a form of L uh, wait a minute for this one in the form of R equal to A plus T and V here 
okay. Well, actually, that is also equal to t. So then, two. Okay, so every single term that we see here is also actually equal to t. So change into this we call in this form. So two t negative one t and negative three t. So it's gonna give you um, x y z equal to a, which a equal to one three and 2 plus t and v here which is 2 negative 1 and negative 3 okay um, where x where x equal to 1 x equal to 1 plus 2 t y equal to 3 minus t and z equal to 2 okay x equal to 1 plus 31 and 2 t y y here equal to 3 and negative 1 t and z equal to 2 and negative 3 t okay so now Find the integral with the plane of plane L pi 1 and pi 2. Find the intersection point between L1 and pi L and pi 1. So uh, we are going to substitute the value of call x, y, and z into the equation of plane of pi 1. So it is now 2 where x equal to 1 plus 2t. plus okay 2x minus y minus y y is 3 minus 3 2x minus y minus 2z minus 2 and z is 2 minus 3t equal to 70 okay so 2 times 2 2 times 1 equal to 2 2 times 2 equal to 4t minus 3 plus t minus 4 plus 6 t equal to 17 so then you'll get t equal to mm, 2 okay so then when t equal to 2 we are going to substitute the value of t equal to 2 here now so that we can see we can will get the exact coordinate of x y and z that intersection between the line and the plane. So then substitute x here, where x equal to 1 plus 2 times 2, z equal to 3 minus 2, you know, y, sorry. y and z equal to 2 minus 3 times 2. So type 2 times 2 equal to 4, plus 1 equal to 5. 3 minus 2 equal to 1. Z equal to 3 times 2 equal to 6. 2 minus 6 equal to negative 4. So the inter point of intersection is between L and pi 1 is 5 1 negative 4 okay question b the acute angle between pi 1 and pi 2 so pi 1 okay which is uh, 2x minus y plus 2z is minus here sorry equal to 17 and also pi 2 we get 
negative 4x minus 3y plus 5z equal to 10. Okay, so class, the equation of plane where r dot n equal to a dot n. Okay, so uh, the normal of this plane we call uh, represent by the value of 2, negative 1, and negative 2. And also for pi 2, which is negative 4, negative 3, and 5. So then, uh, n1, which is 2, negative 1, negative 2, 2, negative 1, negative 2. And n2 equal to negative 4, negative 3 and 5 okay negative 4 negative 3 and 5 <coughs> so then uh, we need to find that we call the theta equal to up cos of n1 dot n2 divided by modulus of n1 and modulus of n2 by the way, we need to find modulus of n1 and n2 first. So we are going to find out modulus of n1, which is square root of uh, 2 square plus negative 1 square plus negative 2 square. And this is going to give you 2 square equal to 4. 1 square is 1. Negative 2 square equal to 4. 4 plus 4 equal to 8 plus 1 equal to 9. Square of 9 equal to 3. Okay. And then modulus of n2. Square root of k n2 negative 4 square plus negative 3 square plus 5 square. Okay. Negative. It is now negative 4 square equal to 16 plus 9 plus 25 this is square root of uh, 25 okay so 16 plus 9 plus 25 50 square root of 50 okay anyway let's just let it begin so now uh, <clears throat> back to this question again now. and then n1 dot n2 where it is now 2 negative 1 negative 2 dot product with negative 4 negative 3 and 5 so 2 times negative 4 equal to negative 8 plus negative 1 times negative 3 3 Negative 2 times 5 equal to negative 10. Negative 8 plus 3. Okay, negative 8, negative 10, negative 18 plus 3, negative 15. So, substitute here. Okay, uh, theta equal to arc cos of n1 dot n2 equal to negative 15 or make this one as a, what we call, uh, positive modulus of 50, 15 and then this one is 3 multiplied with square root of 50. Okay, so this one is going to give you 135. So that the acute angle between, okay, it's just something like this, okay, this is a line of N1 and N2. So 135 is an angle, something like this, okay, 135 degree. We want an acute angle, acute angle where it's a theta lies in between 0 up to 90 degree, where 135 is greater than 90. So then, we wanted the theta 
Okay, make it alpha, the acute angle that we're looking for here now is alpha equal to 180 minus 135 degree. And this one will give you 45. So just imagine that this is 45 degree, the acute angle that we're looking for that. Okay. Um, question C. Okay, I think that I need to clear all this first then. Okay, question C, the acute angle between L1 and pi 2. Okay, the acute angle between, so now we are referring to this vector for L1. We are referring to this, ref, our reference of vector for L1 and pi 2. Pi 2, here we look at negative 4 negative 3 and 5 so it's between L which is X Y Z equal to A 1 3 2 plus T and V 2 negative 1 negative 3 and by 2 it is negative 4 X minus 3 Y plus 5 Z equal to 10 okay again we're going to use the same process of this theta equal to our cos of all this so then uh, this is our reference here now and for this one pi 2 where n equal to negative 4 negative 3 and 5 so that uh, v dot n equal to this V, 2, negative 1, negative 3, dot product with the N here, negative 4, negative 3, and 5. Okay. So 2 times negative 4 equal to negative 8. Negative 1 times negative 3 plus 3, and negative 3 times 5, negative 15. Uh, negative 8 plus 3, negative 5. And negative 15 become negative 20 and then uh, modulus of v1 here it is square root of 2 square plus negative 1 square plus negative 3 square equal to square root of 2 square equal to 4 plus 1 plus 9 9 plus 1 equal to 10, square root of 14. And modulus of n, 2, equal to square root of negative 4, square, plus negative 3, square, plus 5, square. 16, 9, plus 25. Okay, so, <coughs> 16 plus 9, 25 plus 25 equal to square root of 15. So now, theta equal to a cos of, okay, dot product which is negative 20. Make it positive with absolute value sign here. And then square root of 14 and square root of 50. So use the calculator and this is going to give you 139.11 degree so this is not acute angle because it is greater than 90 degree so the acute angle which is 180 minus 139.11 degree that equal to 40.89 degree Okay. 
Okay, class. Uh, I make a check and check in just now, which I think that I need to maybe call some clarification and maybe call a correction, where we don't need to uh, call come up with the sign of eagle. We call absolute values here or the mod. And we call the set here because we just let it call. Uh, we call let the calculation of up cost of negative fifteen divide by those everything that, and also here. Sorry. Okay. There you go. Um, up cost of negative 15 divided by 3 times square root of 50 and up cost of negative 20 divided by square root of 14 and square root of 50 for this one here. Okay. And now, I'm going to make a clearance again. This one. The parametric equation of line that passes through the point of this one, 2, 1, 3, and perpendicular to the plane of pi 2. Parametric equation of line. So then, uh, vector equation of a line L here is for D, vector equation. Vector equation of line L is let's say r equal to okay uh, 2i minus j plus 3k plus with t and v equal to negative 4i minus 3j plus 5k okay so the parametric equation of this one x y and z Okay. Mm. to the plane of pi 2 plane of pi 2 negative 4 negative 3 and 5 okay this is the normal of the plane of pi 2 so that's why we use this as our reference here now to make a recall vector equation meaning that we have formed the we form the vector equation of line l passing through point of this and perpendicular to the plane so just imagine that uh, this plane has a normal sorry this plane has a normal of negative 4 negative 3 and 5 where the normal is negative 4, negative 3, and 5. Okay, so we like to form the vector equation of line passing through the point of 2, negative 1, 3. Let's say this is a point of 2, negative 1, and 3. So the line that passing through the point and perpendicular to the vector of this n. So, r uh, equal to a. a is the, we call the point coordinate of 2, negative 1, 3. And our reference now is that normal to the plane. Vector normal to the plane here now, negative 4, minus 3, and plus 5. Okay. So, in parametric equation, x equal to 2 and negative 4. 2 minus 4 t y equal to negative 1 and negative 3 t z equal to 3 and 5 3 plus 5 t get it okay question 5 
the probability distribution function of this grid random variable x is given as this one here now as you see your screen calculate uh, is a discrete class is a discrete not continuous okay it's a discrete now so random variable x is given as this one here now calculate x in between 2 and 5 okay look at okay because it's a discrete again so every single so we call symbol or sign is matters so this x including 2 but does not include 5 so meaning that is a property of x equal to 2 plus property of x equal to 3 plus property of x equal to 4 plus property of x equal to 5 no nope. okay that's it so now when x equal to 2 the for, we call the value we call the uh, the function is x over 17 where x equal to 2 sorry then when x equal to 3 also x over 17 and when x equal to 4 it is x over 34 so make the we call turn this all the now we call the denominators from 17 become 24 so 17 times 2 equal to 34 so 2 times 2 equal to 4 17 times 2 equal to 34 so 3 times 2 equal to 6 4 plus 6 equal to 10 plus 4 equal to 14 over 34 Okay, class. Because the question wants us to find the variance of x, and for this one, if I change, I call if I can, what we call transfer this uh, function into this table. X and property of x equal to an x. One. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay? So, x equal to 1. 1 over 17. 2 over 17. 3 over 17. 4 over 34. 5 over 34. 6 over 34. And 7 over 34. If you like to change all this into what we call denominator of 34 here, it is uh, 17 times 2. So, 2 over 34. 4 over 34. 6 over 34. Something like that. Okay. So, we're going to find the variance. Variance of x equal to e x square minus expected of x square so we're going to find that this and this one by one so expected of x equal to uh one of, okay are we going to use one over 17 or two over 34 which i think that we're going to use this one here okay 234 434 and 634 here because at last we're going to because simplify this so 1 multiplied with 2 over 34 plus 2 times 4 over 34 plus 3 times 6 over 34 plus 4 times 4 over 34 plus 5 times uh, yes 5 over 34 plus 6 times 6 over 34 plus 7 times 7 over 34 so then this will give you okay okay so now 1 times 2 uh, equal 2 plus 2 times 4 equal to 8 3 times 6 18 16 25 plus 36 plus 49 and everything divided by 34 
equal to k. Um, yes, 2 plus 8, 18, 16, 25, 36, and 49. 154 divided by 34. Good. And then, <coughs> Square is 1 times 2 is 2, 2 square equal to 4, 4, 4 is 16, 3 square equal to 9, 9 six times 6 equal to 54, 4 square, 4 square equal to 16 times 4, 64, 4 square 16 times 4 equal to 64, plus 5 square is 25, times 5, 100 and, okay, 5 square, 35 times 5, 125, 6 square equal to 36 times 6, 216, and 7 square, 49 times 7, 49 times 7, 300 and, 343, and everything divided by, 34. So the total of this equal to okay, 2 plus 16 plus 54 plus 64 plus 125 plus 216 and 343. 120 divided by 34. Okay, so it's time for us now to substitute the value into this equation here now. Okay. Where should I write this one here now? <laughs> Can I mind? Okay, so variance of x equal to e x square minus e x in bracket square. So e x square here, hundred and twenty divided by thirty four minus e x, hundred and fifty four divided by thirty four. So for this one here now, use your calculator. Then uh, you should get. Uh, 3.6 okay 1041 divided by 289 or 3.6 so that is a variance okay so now uh standard deviation So what's the question then? Uh, determine the variance, calculate the standard deviation of y. Okay, okay so standard deviation. Uh, standard deviation of y equal to uh, square. 
square root of variant of y which is square root of variant of phi square root of phi x minus 1 okay which is square we call 5 square root of 5 variant of x equal to square root of 5 and standard deviation of x which is square root of 5 times uh, square root of this is variance okay variance of sigma square so the standard deviation is square root of 3.6 which is equal to 4.24 okay next question then the time taken the time taken a student in hours to study is given by continuous stress variable x okay continuous with the x with a cumulative density function of this one here okay cumulative density function determine the value of k so class i'm going to use the value of 0 and 10 into this function because it's a cumulative here so we can just simply f10 minus f0 okay uh, and because we call it equal to 1 here so now um F10 substitute 10 here, okay. 1 minus k, 1 minus k, 10 minus x, where x equal to 10 square. Okay, the first one minus, and then when x equal to 0, 1 minus k, 10 minus 0 square. It's a cumulative function we call from 0 until 10 we equal to 1 and here okay so then now uh, 10 minus 10 equal to 0 so 0 times k equal to 1 and then okay so 10 minus 10 equal to 0 square is 0 times k equal to 0 1 and then minus 1 and then 10 minus 0 equal to 10 10 square equal to 100. Negative, negative become positive. 100k equal to 1. Okay. So 1 minus 1 equal to 0. Then k equal to 1 over 100. So rewrite the function of uh, cumulative here. 0 for x less than 0. And then 1 minus 1 over 100. 10 minus x squared for x in between 0 and 10 and equal to 1 for x greater than 10. Okay, k equal to 1 over 100. So now, because this is a continuous random variable x, so for question b, determine the property function, uh, find this one here. Okay, so probability of x from 3 until 9. Okay, we can strictly use f9 minus f3. Okay, so it's now first one substitute x with 9 here. x with 9 here, 1 minus 1 over 100, 10 minus 9 squared minus 1 minus 1 over 100, 10 minus 3 squared. And this one, uh, 10, minus, 10 minus 9 equal to 1. 1 squared is 1 times 1 over 100. So 1 minus 1 over 100. Then minus 10 minus 3 equal to 7. 7 squared is 49. Negative, negative, negative 1 negative negative positive 49 over 100 so 1 minus 1 equal to 0 49 minus 1 equal to 
48 over 100. Okay. Forty-eight. Uh, twelve times twelve. Okay. Simplify this. Divide by four. Forty-eight divided by four is twelve, and hundred divided by four is twenty-five. Yes. And then determine the property density function for the first one. Then, okay, for x less than zero, so we differentiate zero respect to the x equal to zero. For x in between zero until ten, so we differentiate the function of one minus one over hundred ten minus x squared. Okay, equal to, for this one, you will get 1 over 5 minus 1 over 50x. Okay, you try to simplify this, multiply and simplify, then differentiate, you will get this one, you know. And for x greater than 10, so differentiate 1 respect to the x, <coughs> which is equal to 0. Okay, so for the function fx here now, it is 1 over 5 minus 1 over 50x for x lies in between 0 and 10. And since that we have 0 and 0, meaning that it's 0 otherwise. So if we make a number line from 0 until 10, there is a function exists here which is 1 over 5 minus 1 over 50 times x. But the rest of it from negative infinity to 0 or 0, 10 to positive infinity, the function is 0 and 0. So that's why the rest of the, the domain of this is otherwise equal to 0 then. Okay. And then for question of B, the variable, find the median of x. Median, okay, use the cumulative here. And x equal to an m, which is 1 over, mm, okay, 1 over 100, 10 minus m, square equal to 1 over 2. Okay, so from here now, bring this 1 to the other side, negative 1 over 100, 10 minus m, square equal to 1, where he become negative Half minus 1 equal to negative 1 over 2. Multiply negative left and right. It give you 1 over 100. 10 minus m squared equal to 1 over 2. And then multiply 100 left and right. So we get 10 minus m squared equal to. And multiply with 100 here. And also 100 here. It give you 50. So then. Uh, expand and simplify, simplify this, it gives you m squared minus 20m plus 50 equal to 100. So, you will get two values of m, m1 and m2. Okay, but there's only one value of m that really recall reliable for this one here now, where m equal to 2.93, because this value lies in between. 0 until 10. Okay. Obtain the values of x. <coughs> okay. Um, Okay, so the values of x, we need to find expected of x first. Okay, for this, we are going to use this one here. 
okay this function of small letter of fx okay 1 over 5 minus 1 over 50 x and for expected of x is an integral of x multiplied with fx dx so then integral of x and 1 over 5 minus 1 over 50 x dx from 0 until 10 okay from 0 until 10 mm, for this one integral of 1 over 5 x dx minus integral of 1 over 50 x square dx so it is 1 over 5 x square divided by 2 minus 1 over 50 x cubed divided by 3 so from 0 until 10 you should get this as a mm, yes you should get this as a 10 over 3 uh, do you think that I need to show we call how the process one by one no okay so I do believe that all of you still remember how to use that so expected of x squared it is integral of x squared and the function of this fx 1 over 5 minus 1 over 50 x squared dx so that it is 1 over 5 x cubed divided by 3 minus 1 over 50 x squared x squared equal to x4 x5 divided by 5 0 until 10 so from 0 until 10 uh, substitute 1 okay substitute 10 first 10 cubed equal to 1000 uh, uh, divided by 15 minus 10 power 5 divided by all this and this one you should get 50 divided by 3 okay so then the variance of x equal to uh, 50 over 3 minus 10 over 3 squared and this should get 50 divided by 9 uh, I'm just thinking of do I really need to show all of you the process of substituting the value one by one? Okay, never mind. I'll show you one of it. So I'll just we can show you one of this one here now. The rest, okay, for this one you try yourself. Uh, expected of x equal to okay. I'll take from here. Uh, okay, x square divided by five times two equal to ten minus x cube divided by fifty times three equal one hundred and fifty from zero until ten. Okay, so the first one substitute x with 10. 10 squared equal to 100 divided by 10 minus 1000 divided by 150 minus and then 0 and then also 0. So then um, equalize the denominator 10 times 50, 10 times 15 equal to 150. So, 150,000 here. So, 100 times with 15,500 equal to 500 divided by 150. Then you should get it is 50 divided by 3. You get it? Okay, you try yourself on this part here now. Okay, next question, the last final question here is question 7. In every delivery of cupcakes to a particular restaurant, 30% will be returned due to not favored by cupcake lovers. 
So suppose 20 requests are randomly required and selected from delivery, which protein that most 5 will be returned? So class, in this case, in this case, uh, when we talk about binomial, last time we mentioned about the binomial, we, uh, we call <coughs> X binomial distributed with N number of trial and probability of success. Success is not means that always the positive, uh, we call, uh, thing that is the positive things, no. Okay, 30% will be returned due to favored, not favored by the cupcakes. 30% will be returned, meaning that the cupcake is failed, failed to the bakery. But then, uh, to the baker, we call to the shop, it is a success, uh, success, we consider it as a success because we can determine earlier the 30% of the cup, uh, which is not favored by the cupcakes. So in this case, uh, suppose that the cake cupcakes are randomly se uh, selected from the delivery, what is the probability that at most 5 will be returned? Okay. So the number of trial here now, X with the binary distributed with number of trial is uh, 20, okay, and P equal to 30% or 0 0.3, okay. So what is the property that at most, at most 5 will be returned, at most meaning that the maximum is 5. So then the property of X less than or equal to 5. So, it is 1 minus probability of x greater than or equal to 6. Because we can only find the, the value that we call the probabilities from the statistical book. Where is that book? Sorry. Mm. We can only find the probabilities from this book, okay, or binomial. For property of x greater than or equal to r. So we wanted x less than or equal to 5. So the total of properties which is equal to 1 minus property of x greater than or equal to 6. So this one here, 1 minus um, 5, 0 point, 0 0.586, which is equal to 0 0.4164. And then suppose the restaurant will be holding an event which requires an order of 200 cupcakes. So when the total, we call the numbers of uh, trial is greater than 50, so there will be uh, the number of trial is 20, 200, and equal to 100, which is greater than 50. Okay. So there will be approximate the probability of between 56 and 62 of the cupcakes will be returned. So from X with the binary distributed with the just now, it is a 200 of cupcakes with the probability of success is 0 0.3. Then we come up with the normal uh, normally distributed with N equal to uh, mean mu equal to 200 multiplied with 0 0.3 which give you 60 and then the variance equal to 200 times 0 0.3 and uh, probability of success is 0 0.3 and probability of fail is 0 0.7 and this one will give you uh, 42 so from binomially distributed 200 cap, uh, trial of cupcakes with a probability of success 0 0.3 we turn it into normally distributed with 60 the mean and variance is 42 okay so probability of success that we are uh, probability of 56 and 62 of the cupcakes will be written okay, uh, for 56 and 62 okay is that here 56 56 minus 60 divided by square root of 42 and also 62 minus 60 divided by square root of 42. This is various. We will divide by standard deviation here. Okay. So then this one will give you. Oh, yes. Sorry. Uh, 
we should add something. I missed something here because it's from binomial to normal. So we're gonna come up with uh, things that we call uh, continuity correction. Okay, so for this one here now, 56.5. Minus 60 divided by square root of 42. Okay, said. And then also 62. 61.5 minus 60 divided by standard deviation square root of 42. Okay, so for this one here now. This one you will get, uh, we call, you will get a negative value and positive value. Okay, it's a of this one okay the total of this is negative 0 0.54 okay and for this one here now okay 61.5 minus 60 divide by square root of 42 okay 0. 2, 3, 1, 5. So now, uh, for normally distributed, okay, this is a middle line here now, that we have negative 0 0.54 and 2.31. So this is a probability then. So we're going to find out from here and here, it is 1 minus property of z greater than 0 0.54 minus property of z greater than 2 point, okay, 0 0.2315. Okay. Okay, you just, okay, find out this from your uh, books then. Uh, 0 0.54, uh, normal. Table of standard normal distribution, 0 0.54, 0 0.54, which is 1 minus 0 0.2946, and for 0 point, uh, 0 0.23, 0 0.23, okay, 0 0.23, 0 0.2 and 0 0.03 you find that this value in your book 0 0.4090 and this is going to give you okay bye bye uh, 1 minus 0 0.2946 minus 0 0.4090 which is 0 0.2964. Okay, you go. And the last final one. If the uh, probability of observing less than n number of cupcakes among those which are written is 0 0.99 to use the normal approximation to determine the value of n. So this one here now, okay, for w, ah, sorry. Okay. Observing less than number of n cupcakes. Okay, uh, we have a uh, recall uh, variable of x with some situation of and then some y. Like y. So let's say we come up with a variable of w here with uh, less than n number of cupcakes among the delitos delivered, which is 0 0.992. Use the normal approximation to determine the value of n. So this one here now, property of z uh, greater than equal greater than n minus 0 0.5 
minus 60 divided by square root of 42, which is equal to 0 0.008. Okay? So the total of properties is equal to 1. So for which is n, let me call the, uh, the observ observation that less than n. So we change it to the z of normal distribution uh, greater than so 1 minus 0 0.992 it gives you 0 0.008 okay so for this one here now where n minus 0 0.5 minus 60 divided by square root of 42 equal to 2.41 so class, where do you find that 2.41? So, so we call suddenly appear here. Okay. Uh, look at this. Find that we call the probabilities of 0 0.008 from this book. Okay, turn to page 21. And we find the we find the value of 0 0.008 inside these boxes. Okay, inside these boxes. We try to find the value of 0 0.008, uh, which is the closer one. Um, 0 point, uh, 0 0.008. I found it here. 0, 0.0. Okay. I found it here. Uh, okay, so 0 0.0082. And the value of Z, 2.4. And then 0 0.00. Oh, here, 0. Okay, no, no, 2.41. 2.41. Okay, 2.4 2 and 0 0.01. Here, we we'll get 0 0.008. Okay, so then the, we call the value of Z. In the term we call with the properties of 0 0.008, which is 2.0. With a zero z is two point four, and find the value what we call the the column of zero point zero one. You will find that there is a zero point zero zero eight. Okay. So now, for this one here, okay, uh, calculate this and bring up to the other side, and you will get n equal to seventy six. Okay. So class, that's all for today and I do hope that this video helps you, okay, helps you in your, call to under, uh, in your revision, try to understand, uh, recall the, how we going to, recall how we tackle or handle the questions, so hopefully that all of you will get a result in flying colors. Uh, that's all from me, thank you very much until we, we meet again. And hopefully that all of you will get A in your we call mass uh, examination. Thank you very much. That's all from me. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Have a nice day.